Hey, what's up? John Sonmez from SimpleProgrammer.com. So I got a bit of a long question here that I'm trying to debate whether or not I'm going to read the whole thing. It's, it's called I Can't Get a Good Job. And it is about the shitty state of affairs sometimes in software development shops. I think a lot of you will probably, probably share some of the sentiments of the emailer in question here. Uh, before we get into this though, I do want to take a moment to thank a sponsor of Simple Programmer, the sponsor of Simple Programmer right now, which is Hire.com. They're really cool. Uh, I don't think that too many companies are cool enough to be sponsors on this channel. A lot of companies think that I'm a, a, a racist, non-PC, bigot, uh, male chauvinist asshole and they wouldn't want to sponsor me anyway. So it's a lovely match when, when we can, you know, be love when, when someone gets you and you get them and, and I, I like hired.com. So anyway, uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I'm just joking by the way about that, about that stuff. You know, everyone thinks that I'm cool, obviously. So check out hired.com, go to hired.com slash simple programmer. And let me tell you why it's because they're awesome because they basically flip job search on their head, on its head and they do it the right way, which is you apply one time with them, they screen and filter you and, and makes it your quality. And then they present you to a bunch of different employers who then try and get you, who bid on you, who like go after you, as opposed to you applying for 50 jobs and going through a whole HR database where they're scanning for keywords and all that crap. So I think they're cool. If you go through hard.com slash simple programmer, you will get a $2,000 bonus instead of $1,000 when they hire you, when they get you a job, which is pretty cool. So definitely check that out. Uh, and uh, you know, just check it out. Just go fill out the application and see what it's like to go through that process instead of doing the old, you know, was it dice.com, monster.com, all that crap that, uh, so such a painful process, right? This is a much better process. So check it out. Let me know what you think also. I'm, I'm curious to hear what you guys think about it, but uh, I, I like it. I think they're cool. And, and like I said, I like Hired. I think they're a good company. So uh, that's why I'm allowing them to sponsor this channel. So anyway, I have a question. It's long here. I think I'm going to whip out my old phone to read this because I don't want to have to up to the screen here, but it's basically this question about, I can't get a good job. All right. I've been, I had this one sitting for a long time. So it says, hi, John. I started watching your videos on YouTube recently. They've been helpful. Thanks for making them. You sometimes answer emails and videos. So I hope you'll answer mine. Yes, I will. Yes. <laughs> uh, so anyway, he says, gosh, how did I, I scrolled it when I did that. Uh, I studied business administration and taught myself programming after my regular job on evenings and weekends for over a year. Cool. I switched to web development three years ago and worked at several small and medium companies where there is no process, no planning, no onboarding, a lot of technical debt and no consistency. Welcome to the club. This is the real world of software development. Shh. Okay. <laughs> it seems that people become VP managers or lead architect just because they've been with the company for the longest and they're technically good, not necessarily because they're good at architecting, planning or managing people. Quite the opposite. This is known sometimes as the Peter principle and it is reality. Good observation. This has always resulted in a shit show where the features are poorly planned, poorly specced, the code is disgusting, illegible, riddled with hacks, and where even the most trivial feature takes developers weeks or months to put together. Oh boy, gosh, no one told you about the secret of software development, I'm sorry. Because the architect is an architect, every developer is left to do their own implementation, and there's no consistency in the code base pushing the technical debt problem even further. Everyone above developers acts like beheaded chicken running around. One feature has been on the backlog for months and all of a sudden it becomes the utmost priority. <laughs> I love this. Only to be dropped a few weeks later after a developer has been pulling their hair out trying to get something out the door to meet the deadline. Now, my issue is that I keep getting this kind of jobs and every other company I interview with seems to be exactly the same, making it pointless to even switch. 
Okay, this is wearing me down. I had burnout last year. Burnouts are costly money-wise and health-wise. I'd rather not have yet another one. It's also affecting my professionalism where I become very cynical and churn out code I wouldn't want to maintain because the company ultimately values delivering the feature over code quality. I'm gonna address this with this uh, I'll interject here. This is called whining. I'm sorry, it is. And it's called making excuses for yourself. Stop doing it. And I'm not just talking to the person who emailed this. I'm talking to you. Stop doing it. It's not an excuse. There's no reason that someone else lowering their standards means you have to lower your standards. That's called whining. That's called being a victim. That's called not taking personal responsibility and losing your own integrity and self-respect. You do not have to do that. Don't mean to be harsh, but I need to tell you the truth here. Okay, so <laughs> lastly, I tried my best to see my job as just something I do for money so I can do things I actually enjoy in my free time. I thought this would be a fix letting me work anywhere because I wouldn't care anymore, but it's not. I care even if I don't want to. Yep, that's not gonna work. <laughs> a job is not something that you just do for money. It's not, unless you're planning on that specifically for a purpose with an end goal in mind and you're willing to shovel some shit or eat some shit for some period of time. I'm at my wit's end. I love writing software, but working is making me so averse to it. I've even considered switching to a more business role, but I suspect the shit show attitude uh, is endemic to a company and not just a department. Oh my God, if you join a business role, you better be ready for a shit show. You want to talk about incompetent, pointy-haired people who don't know Jack? Believe me, don't go into business. Um, I'm, I'm left dreaming about the day I'll have enough money to stop working and then quit, but that's not for another 10 years and it will be painful before then. Don't think that way. It feels like I could be doing so much more rather than worrying and ruining my health while not improving my skills. Okay, for those of you that are upset because I'm being mean, I'm not being mean, I'm gonna help, but I, I have to be honest. Okay, so questions. Is every single company the same, save for a handful where there's only a very slim chance to get in? How do you find companies that care about writing quality software and pay more uh, than lip service uh, to it? Are these smaller, larger organizations? How do you get hired? Uh, there when you don't have the typical profile, aka CSBS plus hip internships, hipster internship, I don't know, hip, whatever. Um, how do you not become depressed and burn out every couple of years dealing with such a constant shit show? Uh, and then if he says, he says, if I do decide to answer the question, make him anonymous. All right, you're anonymous, dude. We'll call you Mr. P. Anyway, but, uh, but yeah, so. There we go, that's the long email. And, and what, what, how shall I answer this? A couple of ways. So here's the thing. Not every company is like this, but 95% of them are. This is software development. This is like, you, some of you, you read code complete, you know, here, code complete, if you haven't read already. You read clean code, definitely read that one. And you're like, oh, I, I, I know how to do this. This is awesome. Let's implement Agile the right way and let's do some, let's write some good code. Let's do test driven development. And then you show up at work and you're all happy and everyone's just a dumbass and they don't care about doing a good job and they're just going to put another kludge in there. And the business person is like, so whatever kind of crap, what's on fire today? It was, it was not important yesterday. Now it's suddenly a high priority and we're going to have all these emergency meetings. And we're going to talk about this bullshit. We're going to implement it totally wrong. And I'm telling you, it's going to take two weeks. They say, no, you need to be done tomorrow, blah, 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 whatever. This is the world. This is software development, baby. This is how it works. So you can't change all of that. What you gotta realize is this, right? Yes, there are a few maybe golden companies out there where this is not the norm, right? But there's not very many, honestly. Like, and even there, when you look real deep, you're gonna find some cockroaches. You'll find some, you know, you turn off the lights, and you, you flip them back on in the middle of the night, they'll be scurrying around, they'll be there, right? It's just, nothing is perfect. And stop trying to make things perfect. You know, what you have to do, right? And this is just in general, in life, is you got to, 
you, you can't, the whole, the world is a mess, right? Our OCD minds, we want to organize everything. We want everything to be clean and spotless, right? You know, I always have this fantasy when I move into a new, new house, I'm like, all right, I'm not going to ding up any of the walls. Everything's going to be perfect and clean and nice and organized and all this stuff. And it, it becomes a shit show, right? It becomes, you know, <laughs> you, if you've ever had a new car, you know, gets dirty, like this stuff happened. And if you look behind the walls and you saw, you know, the kind of crap job the electrician did, you would be like, it's all of this facade, right? It's all hidden behind there. And that's what, that's what, what life is. It's messy, it's dirty, it's not perfect, right? You look in your own body, you got tumors. I can't, like, I'm sorry, but you got cancer. Like, like we all do, like it's like some of it's not killing us and some of it will kill us. But we're falling apart, you know? This is the world that we live in. So what I'm saying is don't try and organize this whole world and make it perfect and, 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 and do that. Instead, focus on what can you do. Do the best job that you can do. Have pride in your work. It doesn't matter if other people do. Like, you're fighting the mess, right? You're building the best thing that you can do. You're trying to instill principles in other people, but you're not trying to control them. There's a total difference here, right? When you feel like you have responsibility for things that you can't control, right? Then it, it's gonna burn you out. You're not gonna feel good about that. You're gonna be upset about that. It's gonna be a tough, tough life. I can't believe this video is already this long. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? So don't try and do that, right? Instead, take ownership for you. 100% responsibility for yourself, for the job that you do. Take responsibility for the work that you do, for the quality of that work that you do. You know how to do things the right way. Do it to the best of your ability. If someone asks your opinion, give them your opinion. You know, if you do that, you're gonna have more influence because people are going to see the difference. And even if they don't, who cares? Because you can sleep good at night because you know you did a good job and that's what drives you and that's what motivates you. It's not ever cleaning up the entire world because it's not gonna happen. You're not cleaning up the entire code base. Believe me, when I get in a project and I would work on a code base, I would wanna clean up the entire code base. You know, sometimes I'd work on a million line code bases. It's just not gonna happen, never. It doesn't matter. I could get every single developer on my side agreeing with me that we need to get rid of all the technical debt and we need to clean up this code. And I've tried to do that before and I've wanted to do it and I still want to do it even as I'm telling you this. My insides are saying, no, it must be perfect. <laughs> but I know it's not possible. I know that happiness, that fulfillment in your job lies in letting go. Letting go of all that. Not worrying if the architect is in calm and not worrying if the project manner. So he's got a new fire today, ha. Can we observe that? Can we be disconnected and not get emotional about it and not have to have everything perfect and just say, look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my best job every day in dealing with this, right? You know, it, the, the warrior wakes up every, every day and the battle begins anew. And that your battle begins anew. And this is just, this isn't just career, this is life, right? Every time you wake up in the morning, you know, I went and I hit the gym for two hours today and lifted legs. And I, I, I ran yesterday for two hours. But guess what? When I wake up tomorrow morning, it's gonna be a new day and I'm not gonna be done, I'm not done exercising, right? I'm gonna run again for two hours tomorrow. And on Friday, I'm gonna lift weights and on Saturday, I'm gonna run. You, you know what I'm saying? Like every day the battle begins anew. I'm not, I can't, you can't get to the point where you're done, where you can just go rest. It doesn't happen. It's never gonna be perfectly clean. Everything's never, all your ducks are not gonna be in a row. Instead, realize that the purpose of life, the purpose of your job, the purpose of what you're doing, the reason why you're here is to fight that battle every day and to have fun fighting that battle. And it's a glorious battle and it's worth fighting. And it doesn't matter, you know, you, you, sometimes you feel like you're not making progress, but you are because the progress is not to change the world, it's to change you. And that's what you're trying to do with all of this. You're not trying to make the world perfect. You're not trying to organize all the code. You're not trying to do all that. You're trying to do the best job that you can because it changes you, because you grow from that, because you become a better programmer, because you become a better developer, because you become more patient, because you become a better person, a stronger person, a stronger version of yourself, and you can take on more challenges and you can deal with more chaos. And more good can come from that. It's growth, baby, it's growth. You understand what I'm saying? So the reason why you're getting burned out 
The reason why you're feeling like shit, the reason why you're not able to deal with this and it's affecting your health and costing you money and all this is because you're trying to do, you're, you're focusing wrong. You're focusing on the external. You're trying to organize all this shit around you that it's never gonna be perfect. And even if you went to the to an environment that was five times better than where you are, you you would you would hate it because eventually you would find the flaws in that, right? You could, you know, you, you trade up to the newer model, and then surprise, the newer model's got a got a pimple. <laughs> oh shit. What are you gonna do now, right? It's gonna happen. So stop. Stop the hedonistic treadmill. <laughs> Stop trying to find the, the perfect environment. Stop trying to f find the flawless thing. Stop looking externally to find your happiness and your fulfillment. I did a video on on stop you know finding stop looking for external sources of fulfillment and said look internal. Do what you can do. Do your job. Do a good job at it. Right. That's all you can do is the best that you know how to do. It doesn't mean that you give up. Again. I said that you know before that not not to be a jerk and not to you know feed it not to have this victim mentality right and not to say that oh I'm just going to write crap code because no one cares and it doesn't matter it does matter it really does to you because you're it's your soul <laughs> so let, let me let me just go through and make sure I answered all the questions here so I said is every single company the same no there's a few there's a slim chance. Um, how do you find the companies that, that you care about writing quality software and pay more than lip service to it? Don't worry about that. I mean, look for them, but I'll tell you what, you want to find the company that, 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 that does what you want, that, that's better on the, that's higher on the totem pole. When you become the developer that I'm talking about, the one who doesn't care, who is able to do his best job and not worry about the external and worry, is worried more about himself and personal growth and not about trying to control everything else, you're gonna be more aligned with those companies and those companies will find you. you. You'll find those opportunities when you're ready for them. You're not ready for them right now because you can't handle the shit you're dealing with now. When you can handle this, when you're like, ha, this, bring on the shit storm, bring it on. I don't care, like I'm just gonna do the best job I can. I'm so good at dealing with this, like I'll disarm this guy, I'll do this thing, I'll write my code, I'll write my unit test, I don't care, right? Then then those opportunities will, will show up. Uh, are these smaller or large organizations? It could be either. Uh, how do you get hired there? Again, I already told you that. And then the last, or how do you not become depressed and burn out every couple of years dealing with such a constant shit, shit show? I hope I've answered that one. That was the whole purpose of this long ass video. Anyway, good luck. It's, uh, it's harsh, it's a harsh world. But remember, again, if I leave you one piece of advice, it'd be you have to fight the battle anew every day. Tomorrow morning, I will wake up and my running is reset. I just gotta do it again. Gotta keep doing it. And I like it, I enjoy it. I, it's a challenge every day. I'm never done, I'm never resting. Stop thinking that. I'm gonna recommend you one book real quick here. It's called uh, The Way of the Superior Man by David Data. The very first chapter in the book is what you need to read. It's about not, not ever thinking that you're done, that it's finished, because it's never finished. But this video is finished. And if you want more videos that aren't finished yet, click the subscribe button down below, right here and you'll get more videos. All right, anyway, uh, I hope you liked this video. If you did, show your love with a thumbs up, and I will talk to you next time. Take care.